Hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Matt Milenovic, and I'm one of the co-founders and CEO of Porkchop. We're a Stockholm-based uh, space tech startup with the ultimate goal of establishing an interplanetary economy. But before I go into that, I just want to share a little bit about who we are. So myself and my co-founder, uh, Victor, started the company about uh, three and a half years ago um, when we were still students in KTH. And since then, we've already got some uh, hardware flying in space. So we were on the Transporter 3 rideshare mission with SpaceX uh, earlier this year. And we did all of that while bootstrapping. So we bootstrapped from uh, idea to orbit in like two and a half years for $20,000. Since then, we closed our first round, we expanded our team, and we had a lot of fantastic people uh, with a lot of different uh, expertise in, in the space area. But why do we exist? I mean, what we've noticed and what's a very common trend is that satellite constellations are playing an ever-increasing role in, in all of our lives. So even the newest iPhone is able to talk to, to satellites directly if you're out of cell coverage. Um, on top of this, we've been using GPS you know, for the last, um, I don't know what, 20 years in our smartphones. And more recently, SpaceX Starlink is now connecting the unconnected all across the world. They're making a very big difference in Ukraine. And the way that all of these satellite constellations are being deployed today is primarily through these big, heavy uh, launchers that often go on rideshare missions. So when you go on these big rockets, you end up sharing the rocket with about 150 other roommates. And that's actually the kind of setup that we flew on back in, in January of this year. But the problem is, when you go on a, on a generic route to space, it's like a very bad public transport system. So you go to an orbit where you don't actually want to go. Um, and that's not really helping anybody. So ultimately, satellites are left to do the maneuvering themselves, or they have to um, you know, put these big propulsion systems that are risky and they're complex and they, they add a lot of weight and it just sucks. You know? we, we started as a propulsion company and I always tell people that the best propulsion system is no propulsion system. So the reason that this is a really big problem is that over the next couple of years, over 33,000 satellites are going to be launched into space of which about 84% are part of a constellation. So they're not kind of single satellites that are acting solo. They're um, all part of a larger group, of a collection. And we want to change this. We want to build a kind of Uber for these satellites. So that's why we're building Porkchop M. And it's a reusable orbital transfer vehicle. And what that means is that we transport these satellites with our own vehicle to a different orbit. On top of this, our vehicle is reusable in the sense that it can perform multiple missions in space across its lifetime and thereby splitting the cost across uh, you know, up to 40 missions. The way that it works is that we put Porkchop M um, on these rideshare rockets. So we go into space, we go into this random generic orbit that nobody wants. But afterwards, we separate from the vehicle and we transport our customers to the last mile. So we transport them to where they actually want to go. Afterwards, uh, all, when all of the customers have been deployed one by one into the exact orbits that they need to go to, we jettison the, the container. So this part is uh, self-deorbiting. It doesn't cause any space debris. And then we're able to reuse our Porkchop M vehicle to dock and collect the next batch of payloads and continue the, the process again and again. To make this possible, we had to have three key technology breakthroughs. The first our solid fuel electric thrusters that we use for rendezvous and docking. And this is what we've been developing for about three and a half years now. And this allows extremely fine control when you're approaching another satellite at multiple kilometers per second. You don't want to mess up. The next is a patent pending 3D printed flexible docking port that is much more reliable than an assembly of many parts moving together. And the final is uh, vision-based uh, relative navigation. So you need to use computer vision with one satellite to determine the relative um, orientation and the relative distance between these two satellites. So a little bit about Porkchop M, just to contextualize about how big it is. Um, you can see it's roughly the size of a, of a dishwasher. Um, you know, in the space industry, we like to talk about microwave-sized satellites, dishwasher-sized satellites, and fridge-sized satellites. Um, and we're able to transport up to um, you know, roughly 12 of these microwave-sized satellites, if you want to call it that. And that's enough to get uh, the first couple of satellites operational, that they are now able to start tracking rising sea levels, 
um, illegal fishing vessels. They're able to provide internet connectivity in very remote areas. And on top of this, Porkchop M is natively built to enable autonomous rendezvous and docking with these batches of payloads. So with this reusability, we're able to enable extremely um, accessible prices for our customers. And this is really going to enable these 33,000 satellites to be operational as soon as possible. To do this, um, we're first starting off with a scaled-down mission. So we learned from our, our first launch that the best way to do space is to take a kind of software startup approach where you rapidly iterate and you learn from your mistakes early on in the process. So now we're starting off with these two small satellites that are going to be demonstrating rendezvous and docking and, and the relative navigation um, in October of, of next year. And we're going to still demonstrate the same kind of core functionalities that the, the main vehicle will have. The reason why we're doing this, as I mentioned in the beginning, is to establish an interplanetary economy. So right now, um, Earth orbits are, are still quite difficult to reach. You still have these generic orbits that all the launchers are taking us to. And we believe that the first logical step is making sure that as, as a society, if we want to tackle climate change, we need to be able to measure all of these things very accurately. And to do that, we need to be able to reach all of these orbits properly. The next step is to have frequent and reliable transportation between the Earth and the Moon. There's a huge growth in the amount of activity happening um, between Earth and the Moon. And Porkchop wants to be the sort of transportation link between those two planets. And then the final and the most exciting step in our, in our plan is asteroid mining. And this is, for us, what an interplanetary economy means. It means, for the first time in, in humankind, that we have access to resources beyond just Earth. And for us, we want to be able to accelerate the electrification of transport. And to do that, we're going to need more resources than we have on Earth. I'd like to thank you all so much for listening, and uh, have a fantastic slush.